Uh, I want to welcome everybody today. My name is Tony, and um, we want to thank you all for joining us and being part of the fourth episode of our Jam Compass webinar called The Link. Um, we're excited to have such an awesome panel with us today, and we want to thank all the viewers for tuning in as well. Um, we hope all you guys are staying safe and during all this time and staying inside, and we all obviously can't wait till this is over. Um, but um, I'm one of the co-founders of Jam Compass, which is a mobile app that will be in beta in the next couple months. And it will allow creatives and music industry people like ourselves the ability to connect, collaborate, and find opportunities um, in real time. And while we're finishing development, we wanted to start by bringing the music community together to discuss everything that's going on right now and where we're headed. Um, so continuing from what we've been talking about the past couple of weeks, uh, the topic today was in times of pandemic. And we invited you here to give us your take on how you're dealing with it and uh, within your sector of the industry. Uh, before we get to it, for all the viewers tuning in, uh, you can introduce yourself in the chat section, put your social media and stuff. And then if you have any questions for the panelists, uh, you can ask in the Q&A section and we'll get to your questions near the end. And I'm gonna pass it on to Anthony, my partner in Jam Company. Hey guys, um, yeah, I wanna thank everyone for being on the panel today. Um, we know, you know, things are pretty crazy right now. So we appreciate everyone's, uh, you know, everyone's time and, and taking time out of your day to, to be with us today and, and, you know, speak knowledge to, uh, to the community. Um, so we're going to start today with um, Caroline from APG. So Caroline, um, introduce yourself and let us know, you know, what you've been up to, what you do and how the pandemic has kind of changed how you've been um how you've been working during this time hello i'm caroline and i work at apg um, i'm the director of urban marketing over there and we work in partnership with atlantic records um so some of my roster include nba young boy kaimani um kevin gates and rico nasty and i would say right now things are busier than ever on our end we're definitely focusing more so on the streaming end of things and coming up with creative content for artists to be putting out that you know exceeds just doing animations whether it's you know a creative live stream at home or doing like a full-on music video um some of the things that we've done over the past couple of weeks have just been like kaylani did her own quarantine uh video in her room and edited it and uploaded it to youtube um, and that became like a viral moment for her to tease her upcoming album. And then we just released NBA Youngboy's album last week. And we've just been doing a lot of creative marketing, whether it's, you know, teaming up with some gaming influencers and some dance in influencers. Also, we did like some sky writing in his hometown of Baton Rouge over the weekend. And we've also painted some murals for artists like Don Tolliver in his hometown to just kind of still encourage social distancing, but also be able to have shareable content um, online. And yeah. That's awesome. I mean, how, how's, uh, how's the campaign been going with NBA? And, and have you been seeing a jump in, um, in a lot of the streams and, and a lot of the content that you guys have been producing? Yeah, it's been going really well. I mean, he ended up deleting his Twitter and Instagram on release day. So everything that we've been doing has just been, you know, out of home stuff, like I mentioned, and just seeding out a bunch of different posts to different like popular hip hop pages, as well as, you know, teaming up with Face Clan to do some influence posts. And we see the conversions there with the links um, that they include. And also just working with some dance influencers and TikTok campaigns and stuff like that to just help promote in ways that he's not doing directly. Right, right. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And, um, you know, since, since people aren't touring right now, well, let's, um, let's move over to, um, to Charlene. Um, I work for Concerts West touring and I'm usually out on the road, but currently right now there are no tours. <laughs> so there yeah. are numerous people as I'm sure that are affected by this. So you can imagine that are affected by this um, all the way from people in the venues and people that count on all these tours to keep their livelihood. So there's 
numerous, numerous people out of a job right now, which, and there's really, as you can see, like Live Nation's been trying to do a funding program for people and um, AEG is trying to do funding for their um, staff as well by doing like LA team merch and stuff. Um, I know we're trying to find creative ways to do stuff, but basically we're told to just hold everything and try to schedule everything for 2021. So that's kind of where we're at right now with concerts but um, and tours, but it's definitely nothing anyone's ever seen and no one really knows how to handle <laughs> this kind of situation, I'm sure is in all your industries as well. Um, mm -hmm. But this one's kind of like, feel a little extra hard because you really just have to stop everything and you really can't do anything right now. Um, and I know a lot of venues are gonna have a lot of hard time recovering from this as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the big question that everyone's kind of wondering right now is like when touring and live events will come back. I mean, you know, it's probably the last thing that's going to come back to normal. Um, yeah, they said it was the fourth. Um, what, what was I just saw in the news, like the fourth high, fourth highest risk thing. So like, that's like one of the last things they're going to open is movie theaters and concert venues and sporting mm -hmm. events. So we're very last on the list to have come back. Have you guys been working on any live streaming events um, in the meantime? Or I know they've been trying to do artists. Like, I mean, we have like Luke Combs is one of our tours. He does a lot of posts on his own. Like, you know, we, we've been encouraging them to, you know, try to do stuff to keep, obviously they're doing it themselves to keep um, relevant with their fan base. But I think, you know, our marketing team and everyone's just trying to figure out, it's kind of hard to do stuff when you don't really, know what's going on or when you can reschedule things or when you can you know tell your fans what's happening again but um you know i think all the live streaming contents from the artist is definitely helping um and at least it's keeping them relevant for now but our company right now i think they're probably working on something but i know live nation started offering the free um live streaming of their events of their past events okay awesome awesome thank you um let's move over to uh Brittany. Hey everybody, I'm Brittany. I'm an A&R at Sony ATV. Um, yeah, this pandemic has literally just changed everything in terms of publishing and having sessions and just getting writers and artists just to collaborate with each other and whatnot. But for the most part, I would say um, we're trying to do the best that we can, like on behalf of our writers. Um, we actively um, I, we actively have tons of meetings now throughout the week, a lot of Zoom calls, and like our CEO, um, John Platt, like he's a, he was an A&R like before he became a CEO, but it's really just a top-down effect, like really stresses us actually being there for our writers, providing opportunities. So like I said before, like we've been setting up Zoom sessions, we're also helping our writers build their home studios. Did it go out? That's so weird. <laughs> we lost you at uh, helping build home studios. Okay, dope. Okay, yeah. So, like, we're in the process of helping our writers build their home studios up. So, if they needed a little bit additional funding, we make it a recoupable cause. Um, but I would just say the hardest part for us is to get um, our writers, especially our writers that may be in with more established artists or they're just used to getting in sessions with artists and that's just how they normally work. It's just about getting them adjusted to the new norm of working from home and, you know, writing to beats versus, you know, just writing in session freely with the artists. So. Awesome. I mean, how do you think, I mean, I've been seeing personally a lot of zoom, um, zoom sessions and like collaboration through that. I mean, has that been effective for, for your writers? See, like, it's been effective for some writers. Like, we've heard that some writers like it, but then we also heard that some writers are like, man, what the hell are we supposed to do with this, you know? <laughs> so, I, in terms of, I would say, like, um, cloud-based meeting spaces, um, Zoom is the best one for us because it allows, like, you know, like, our writers can share their screen and actually play, like, what they're working on. Um, I know my coworker, Jen Drake, she's definitely helped um, LMA like get into some Zoom sessions as well. 
So like we're trying to do the best that we can with the new norm, but like we we always actively look to just try to figure out well what else could we do for our rights or how else could we service like everybody on our roster right now, you know. Absolutely. All right, awesome. Let's move over to Leon. Um, what's up, bro? What's good, my brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you been? Things are amazing. You know, I, I've definitely been taking it into my hands to just stay creative. Um, you know, me and my production partner uh, live separately, but we've been working on a lot of music um, online. Uh, definitely not through Zoom, but we're just, we got a Dropbox set up and we'll just throw files back and forth. So that's just been, yeah. I know you guys, my new norm. <laughs> I know you guys have been getting, you know, before this, you guys have been getting some major cuts with Drake and, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, um, a lot of incredible stuff. So I, I recently how, started working with Ariana again. So it, it's it's been amazing to kind of, you know, create with her. Um, right before the pandemic, we were creating a bunch. Um, but we've actually been able to carry on into the pandemic and, and be able to just send music back and forth. And it's been um, helpful. I mean, artists are now getting their home setups locked in. You know, I think it's more so about um, up and coming creatives. You know, just reach out. The DMs are a lot a lot of times pretty much open. So, you know, there's a lot of artists that I'm sure you can you can reach out to to start collaborating with online and um, it's possible, so. Absolutely. Yeah, I think like, I think the new norm now as a, as a writer um, and as a singer too is like, you, you really need that home studio now and, and you really <laughs> know how to, you need to know how to record yourself. Uh, I think that's, yeah. that's something that every uh, up and coming writer really needs to, I think, lock in on. Moving I mean, forward, it's know. also good to have uh, engineer homies, you know what I mean? People that you know who are really solid, you know, with sound, because what you can do is get it as close to exactly what you want it to sound like and send it to them to create this kind of chain effect, you know, the factory effect more so to get the best product. Um, and, and my production partner is an amazing engineer. So I, I personally have that, that, that available to me whenever I need it. But for up and coming, um, you know, producers and, and writers and even artists, I think it's very important for you to reach out to the engineers during this time. I know they'll, they'll definitely appreciate the business. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Steve, how are you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, Thanks for being here. <laughs> you guys, I, I watched one of your previous episodes and uh, I thought it was really good that you guys kept the conversation going over a period of time and had a lot of diverse opinions um i got i, I run vest which is a uh, a company that really allows fans to buy into the royalty streams of their favorite songs their favorite artists uh, it's an online app uh, so we've seen some trepidation on the buying side obviously it's something that people are, are having to spend money on a royalty stream so we're being very cautious uh, i think people are uh, hit very hard with the pandemic and the economy is still very tenuous um, no one knows, you know, if their jobs are coming back or if their employment's going to be back or what's happening. So we're, we're trying to tread very slowly. Um, we've had a bunch of promotions that were in the pipeline to come out, um, had them set up for end of February, early part of March. And as we started to see this thing slowly uh, take the economy down and shut things off, um, we've kind of just put everything on hold for a second. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to artists. I mean, every other day I hear from indie artists that's um, struggling, they're trying to figure out what to do, how to how to structure their day. I think like um, Leon made to just mention, you know, how to get your content back out to people, how to interact with other producers, engineers, writers, in a sense where you can actually get that content back out and develop some type of workflow in this whole new way. So it's uh, unprecedented times. It, it feels like a surreal type of dream to me. I, I you know, the days just blur into the next day, and I don't know if it's Saturday or Tuesday or um, you guys probably feel the same way. So it's been really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. It, def it definitely has. I mean, I'm definitely losing track of the days for sure. I think we're on like day 40 or something like that. <laughs> lockdown. So um, it's flying by though. I will say that. Um, okay. Awesome. Uh, Isaac, how are you? I'm doing well. Grateful that, you know, my family and friends have our health and we have our work and, I have a lot of things to be grateful for. So I'm doing well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, thanks for being on. Um, I knew, I know personally, and a lot of my uh, production friends and a lot of DJ friends are big, uh, big users of mixed in key. 
Um, so we'd love yeah. to hear more about about what you guys uh, are up to and and how have you guys been um, during the pandemic. Yeah, so I'm the product manager at Mixed and Key. Um, we make Mixed and Key software, which helps you detect the keys, it's like if you're a DJ, DJ software. We also make Caps and Plugins, which is a music production composition software that you run inside of Ableton or, or Logic or your DAW to help you write tracks. And we, as a company, we, we're already set up through Slack mainly, like everybody works remotely. We have a pretty big team, but everybody has already been set up on Slack and everybody already works in this way. So it's kind of been the same, like we've just been able to keep the wheels going and production happening. And um, we've been pretty busy with some new updates. We have a big update coming up soon with Captain Plugins, um, our flagship software. And, uh, and beyond that, I think it's been about you know, dealing with the stuff we're all dealing with, you know, just the changes to our day-to-day -day and our, our lives to this moment. So. Exactly. Adapting, right? Absolutely. And I know like um, we've had some, you know, in our, in our past webinars, we've talked about some of the, you know, companies like yourselves doing a lot of deals right now for creators um, in the music space, whether it be like, you know, testing out free products or free demos and, stuff like that are you guys offering any of those we've been doing a we have a beta that like it's testing out our new software and we started a beta team so we've got some people doing that we're trying to give back um when we can and we don't have a software that we feel that we can give away at this time um hmm. we we definitely work with a lot of different video influencers and different people to try and share our software and we we try and help out people when we can. Um, as a company, actually, we started some charities locally. We're based in South Florida. Oh. We started a social media campaign to raise all that PPE that people were missing, you know, right off the bat. We uh, contributed and helped buy a testing machine. And we did a lot locally. And I think we raised, I don't know, I think it's like $5,000 right away with the, with the PPE. And then we were also did a campaign of just going and collecting the stuff and delivering it to hospitals. So we've been active in that way, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mixing and keys is a, is a major, major software that, you know, I think I use daily almost. So it's definitely, nice. uh, definitely cool to have you on here. Do you um, use the studio edition or the standalone? Uh, the studio edition. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I use it for all, all sorts of different things. Um, but yeah, I mean, any, anyone in the audience has any questions, um, for the panelists, please put it in the chat. Also, uh, the Slack channel is live as well, um, to keep the community going. Um, as far as, uh, as far as next steps on the panel, Steve, do you have, uh, any insight on, on as far as VEST goes, as, as far as what future plans are for you guys? Um, yeah, panel? we've got, um, like I said, a couple things in the content pipeline. Um, as far as independent artists and some well-known artists, we actually just inked a deal with, um, I'll, I'll just call him one of the OG rappers of all time and he's now a TV star and you probably can figure out who that is, but um, we were just about to get uh, some social content from him. Um, he's got two of his biggest songs, um, but we're waiting to launch this for a time where, you know, again, we feel like the economy's back and people are more apt to um, be interested in putting money behind music royalties. Uh, so yep. it's, we're continuing to talk to artists. We've got promotions and marketing, um, structures in place. Um, but we're just holding back until we feel like people are focused on, you know, something other than paying the rent and putting food on the table. So it's kind of a, a, a wait and see, um, situation for us. We're, we're gauging it. I mean, I, I know certain communities are opening. Um, I'm in Los Angeles. We still really don't feel like things are open here. Schools are still closed. Beaches are closed. Restaurants are closed. Um, people can't really go outside. Uh, I think they're listening to more music, um, but I'm not sure they're spending um, money on things that aren't really, uh, like I said, staples before. So we're kind of in a holding pattern, but we're always looking for new artists. I had a discussion with an independent record label yesterday um, that's interested in coming on with, they've got, I think, about 12 different artists they work with out of, out of Florida. Um, but there's always opportunities out there. It's just a matter of figuring out timing-wise what makes sense 
um, and then how communities react to what's put before them. So we don't want to hit a promotion hard and spend a lot of money on it when the response rate is not going to be as effective as it might be two weeks later or a month later or something like that. So we're trying to gauge that very slowly. It's, it's interesting times. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, Caroline, I know you've been doing some campaigns. You know, I know you, you touched on it briefly for some of the biggest hip hop artists in the business right now. Um, any advice you could give to say up and coming artists or even artists that are signed to major labels on, on potential marketing strategies or advice on that sense? Um, some of the best things I've seen have just been having consistency on social media. Like, uh, the, th the coolest thing I've seen is honestly too short is doing like a weekly live stream when he invites a different like OG rapper to like just talk with him about various things. And those clips have been doing really well. People are, you know, posting them on different platforms and stuff. He's had like Snoop and E40 and a bunch of other artists on there. And then each week he'll also release two new songs on DSPs and also release like a new playlist. So it's just all these different things that are consistent for fans to look forward to at a set time, set day every week. Um, and then just throwing out different other pieces of content throughout the week, I think is a really good strategy. I also think it's important to connect with, you know, other artists to collaborate with what want to say. Um, I think you can still get effective networking done at home for sure. Um, and I also think we're just like throwing a little video every week. There's definitely really creative ways to, to do that. Sorry, can you hear me? It says my internet is unstable. Yeah, it's, break, it's breaking up a bit. I think it's better now. All right, can you hear me now? Is it better now? Yeah, it's better. Okay. Um, something else that I think is cool I've seen is Summer Walker recently did an acoustic video for Don Tolliver just covering a popular song that's out right now, which gets a lot of traction. So I think artists, you know, doing covers of popular songs is really cool. I think, you know, just collaborating and doing things like just live stream. There's so many different live streams that artists can be a part of every week, um, you know, with other artists. And I think that's a cool way to, you know, just keep getting your name out there too. And also anyone who has some marketing budget to spare, um, just working with some outside agencies, whether they're influencer based or just to promote different pieces of content um, can be really impactful to get new eyes on it. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, question for Steve uh, from the from the audience. Um, have you considered putting the royalty streams on a blockchain would be more transparent and less risky to buyers? We actually have a blockchain component. So every transaction that comes in through Vest. Um, is actually recorded on a blockchain. So we had that built in from day one. We thought that that was nascent technology that was ahead of the game. Um, we didn't put the entire uh, IP structure onto blockchain because it was still very new technology. Uh, as an instance, when we came out, uh, Ethereum was the only smart contract um, blockchain you could use at that point. Um, Bitcoin wasn't, wasn't workable, but Ethereum, you could actually build a smart contract on top of. So we started out with an ERC-20 protocol. Um, we've since migrated to Stellar because Stellar is faster, less expensive. Um, and I know if you're familiar with CryptoKitties, they kind of crashed Ethereum you know, probably a year ago now. Mm -hmm. There's been improvements since, but because it is a very new area, um, we, we tread very lightly into it, but we take all of our transactions, put them on the blockchain so they're public. You can look back. It's a, it's a neutral third-party transparent record of the transactions that happen. Um, we've had interest from publishers, labels, um, PROs even, that are looking at co you know, putting, putting blockchain into place on their platforms. Uh, the problem is you, you've got multiple blockchains. So we're trying to figure out a way that once people figure out a standard, um, there'll be a much more comprehensive look at taking what we call digitized rights, which... Um, there's been a lot of conversations around just taking an entire catalog, digitizing that, tokenizing it. Um, I don't quite think, we don't quite think the, uh, the world's quite ready for that. My partner, Robert Menendez, and I, we thought about this a lot. Um, we've had people come and say, look, why don't you just take my entire song catalog, tokenize it, and let people come in and buy fractions of the tokens. Um, but we're dealing with major labels. We're dealing with companies like BMG, Warner Chapel, Warner Brothers. We're, they're really not equipped at this point to make payments or transact 
in tokens. And most major artists like a Beyonce or a, a Lil' Kim will not accept tokens at all. If you just told them we're gonna pay you in a token, they would say, I wanna be paid in US dollars. So again, we're taking baby steps. I think that at some point that will become where this moves. Uh, we think one of the biggest problems in, in the music business is the transparency and velocity of payments, right? You're an artist, you guys are, some of you are writers. Um, you know that once you put a song out, you may wait eight to 12 months to see your, your performance royalties, or publishing monies come in on that song because ASCAP and BMI and CSAC and the international collection agencies take months and months and months to account and then transfer those funds and make them available to you. Um, if you try to audit your ASCAP statement, for example, it, it's impossible. I think there's actually a clause in the contract that says you can't even audit it, right? When you're looking for an eight cent play in Germany from a year and a half ago, who's got the time or money to go in and find out if that play actually occurred? So you're taking their word and then you're also taking the money that they give you and not really questioning it. So at some point when you can tokenize each one of these rights and you can transparently see from the creation of the song to the distribution and usage of the song, how those royalties flow, I think that's the goal for where we want to get. Um, again, baby steps on the way up there because right now, um, if you even mention tokenized payments into a U.S. bank, uh, as well as banks around the world, you they'll, they'll close your account down. So it's literally taking steps towards that goal, um, incorporating this technology in a way that people can use it and, and get familiar with it and comfortable with it and then moving that ball down the field. Yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, we we here, you know, we have uh, Project Jam and Jam Comics. We're big advocates on blockchain. You know, we've had many conversations with you guys about it. Um, if the PROs and 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 a lot of these publishing companies can figure out some sort of wallet system for you know artists to basically be able to get paid in in currency, uh, cryptocurrency, and then potentially, um, you know, from their wallet to the bank to their bank account. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, you start to realize at some level it becomes political, right? I mean, a lot of these organizations, they could pay you today, right? The technology exists. I can hold up my phone and Shazam two notes of a song in Tokyo. And I know what song that is. I know what rights holders there are involved. I know the path where that, where that royalty should come through. The technology today exists to pay you in real time. It's not happening because you've got, you know, a bunch of different, entities in the middle between the end user and the creator and those pathways aren't so smooth yet i think they're getting better but you're still dealing with a number again of collection agencies that want to account annually or they want to account quarterly right so they're they're based on this old system that isn't i hear it right now i get paid right now i hear it right now but i'm going to get paid eight months from now right so i think there's a lot of especially on the creative side there's a lot of impetus and a lot of artists and, and rights holders that want to see that come through. But there's also these corporate structures that have been in place for decades, even a hundred years on sides of some of the PROs where it's very hard to turn that ship quickly into a new technology or a new way of looking at things. Definitely. And you know, what's the one thing where viruses can spread very quickly through money, through actual cash. Yeah. So the, the pandemic, I think will speed up this process. We're still years away. Um, but you know, things are, the whole world is changing. We're, we're watching it. So hopefully, um, you know, justice for musicians can, can really be put into effect with blockchain. Um, and not to get off topic, but also the issue with the media right now and fake news. I mean, we're seeing it more than ever that it's a major problem, um, in the world. So hopefully blockchain can really kind of step in and, and bring more transparency and facts to, uh, to a lot of different businesses. So. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, Leon. Steve, okay. if I could. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. Steve, what do you see like first quarter 2020 in terms of the impact on royalties for like streaming television, not performance royalties, of course. Um, do you have any insight into that or thoughts? Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've seen the streaming numbers actually go up. And I, I read something yesterday that there was an initial report that the Spotify streaming numbers were depressed. And, and they came back and said that came through some study that wasn't actually accurate. And I saw subscribers numbers actually this morning for Spotify that are up drastically. In other words, paid users versus the freemium users. So I'm convinced. I mean, I, I listen to more music now when I'm at home. 
I think that people have more time. I think that people want to release. They, they want to use music in the way that I think a lot of us enjoy it, where it's taking your mind away from some of these issues that are, that are at hand. And when you have more use, you've got more income. So I think the royalty plays and the streaming income is going to go up. Um, I do know that production is down. Uh, TV production and, and film production are, are at zero. Um, I have a, a friend that has a, a publishing company that syncs a lot of independent songs and trailer music, and they're they're at they're they're frozen. There's nothing coming in on that side. So the licensing and sync side for new productions on the film and TV side is pretty much zero. So I think they're going to get hit pretty hard. But I think the creators with the, co the compositions on the PRO side are going to see increases in royalties coming in over the time that people have been locked down. My background before makes things key is I, I wrote music for TV and commercials and film for like 14 years. So um, I was just, I was getting a little bit more like, you know, just in the radio, I've been hearing people asking for stuff just this last couple months or two, just like a little bit more just library music, a little bit more adding to that stuff. So I think people might have uh, turned off the faucet right away in January, February, but I've been kind of hearing it's back on, you know. That's good to know. I mean, that, that side of the business, not many people are familiar with, but that's where this stuff starts, right? I mean, you've got, uh, I mean, we've got writers that do themes and, and composing, and no one thinks about it, right? The, the CNN theme, that must play, I don't know, 100 times a day in the U.S., and then multiply that by all these territories. Having a cut like that, even though it's, really not a piece of music, it is. Um, it's just not consumed in the same way by average fans. But those things continue to earn much, much more because people are using and streaming and watching those shows more. It's just in LA particularly, we see it because this is basically the hub of TV production and a lot of film production. And when you see crews not go to work, you see scripts and writers frozen, uh, productions that had been planned out you know, during this period not in place. Um, that's going to create some type of a, a shortage, I would say maybe six to eight to 10 months from now. Um, but like you said, at some point it's going to pick back up. They're going to open it up and there'll be a use for the licensing and sync side that I think pumps back up again really quickly. Yeah. Awesome. And, you know, Leon, for someone who's had such massive cuts like you have, I mean, as far as what are your thoughts on like royalty payments and, and what you like to see happen? Well, I mean, I, I've definitely seen an increase already. Um, but, but I look at I look at everything like this. The fact that people have the time right now to really immerse themselves in whatever their favorite artist, um, you know, world is, I think it really gives people a great chance to sell more music than we ever have. But I think you have a lot of artists and in, 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 in major labels kind of feeling like, can we truly sell the product right now? So I think that's going to be the thing that stops uh, the Spotify train or the stream train, if anything, just, just, just a lot of major artists kind of feeling like, well, let's hold back and see how long this lasts, you know? Um, but I think people are definitely listening to music and, and um, you know, it, it's, it's interesting to even see the, the, the major artists that I'm, that I'm even working with right now and how everybody's kind of thinking about the pandemic. It's just more of a period of collection of creativity so that they can really let it out once we're all free to, for you to do our thing. Awesome. And Brittany, what are your thoughts? No, oh, just to piggyback off of what Leon was saying, like it's it's a little like we're just trying to like make sure that our writers can just like just flow creatively as much as they can during the quarantine and I think we lost you again. Sorry. I don't know what's going on with my Zoom call, but anywho, but like I was saying, like, um, we just, like you said, like, we're just trying to make sure that everything is ready to go. Um, luckily, artists now are at home with their home studios. Like, a lot of people actually have time to record versus how artists usually typically has to do everything under the sun, but then they only have, like, a chunk of time to actually sit down and record. So, we try to look at it through the positive um, lens, but... You know, um, like we just like like we said, we just always want our writers to just keep creating as much as they can. Definitely. But luckily now, I just want to also say, but luckily now, um, like nowadays, like creators, like they create, they um, co-create with each other, like all around the world. Like the we transfer, like how he said that he shares the Dropbox links with his other um, co-producer. So.
Yeah, I think I think there's way too many people on Zoom overall right now. That's why it's you know, that was going on. <laughs> things have things have, things have changed. Yeah, things have changed since uh, episode one of the webinar to now. That's for sure. As far as the uh, you know the bandwidth. Um, happy hour on East Coast. That's what's going on. Uh, yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brittany, there's a question um, from the pen, from the Q and A. Um, Brittany, can you talk about the new ATL office and studio complex? Um, yeah, so we just opened up a new ATL office. So when this pandemic, hopefully when it passes, because we were trying to have this open, but then you know all of this took over. But uh, we have a studio complex down in Atlanta for our writers. Uh, we have a lot of writers uh, based in Atlanta, so. Um, it's an office space, but then the studios will also be for our writers. And the goal is for it to become a really just like a really dope place for creatives to just work out of. You know, um, Atlanta is a really major place for hip hop and R&B. So uh, it's it's really dope, especially for Sony. Um, my coworker Mike Jackson is going to be running that office. So like. Oh, yeah. Come on, Zoom. <laughs> we lost you at uh, Mike Jackson's going to be running that office. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. So Mike Jackson's going to be running the office. And like we said, like we just want, like we said, we have a handful of writers down there. So we just want it to just be a creative place where everybody can come and work, you know? Awesome. And Charlene, yeah. I know, um, you know, since touring is, is down, uh, you know, completely down right now. Um, where do you think, how do you think things are going to, going to be when touring does fully come back around? And now there's this live, comp uh, live streaming component that essentially could be monetized on top of tours. Um, and you know, what I work with on the live streaming side and the CCVs and essentially the advertising and brand side that could be incorporated in, um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I definitely think that will be something we'll have to deal with, um, but I think there's no substitute for live music and people will still want to go to concerts and go to the tours because it's what they know, what they're used to. Maybe the millennials or younger crowd might get more used to the online concerts, um, but yeah, um, right now, just I know yesterday they said the shows that we actually did put up for refunds because they have to be canceled or rescheduled right now to actually get a refund um they said the percentage rate is really low of people getting refunds so that's kind of promising but that clearly all depends on how long this goes and how much money everyone loses or and or has and obviously i'm also thinking that in general like ticket prices and concession prices and parking and all that is probably going to have to be modified um i know they're talking about modifying even how much we pay the artists because everyone's taking a hit here but um i do think the online thing will definitely catch on but i always i do think that the live um shows will always be better than anything you can get online yeah i mean you can't you can um get the uh the energy from a crowd on in your living room that's for sure um also you know something i've read i know we, we talked about it briefly on, on other webinars um you know, Live Nation's obviously going to be doing a lot of changes to their contracts, potentially um, paying artists a lot less or, or even nothing based on like per, uh, ticket sales and, and even doing like uh, performance based um, payouts based on how many tickets they sell. So do you, do you have any info on, on that and any updates on that? I think we've all been, I know the... Um you know, the heads up high ups in my office have been speaking with a lot of the, you know, high ups in agencies and Live Nation and other parts of the industry. And they want to kind of make everything collaborative so that everyone's kind of on the same page. And it's not like AEG wants to do it this way. Live Nation wants to do it this way. So we're trying to all kind of work together. And yes, AEG is kind of, from what I've been hearing, thinking on doing the same because you know, we don't have any income right now, so it's kind of hard. And we also don't think that the the turnover on people coming back to shows right away is going to be as strong um, as it would have been before. So definitely 
it's something we're definitely talking about. But I know everyone's trying to keep everything cohesive so that nobody can get mad that this person's doing this or get a better deal from here. So, right, that makes sense. Yeah, and can I ask a question about the uh, the live stuff? I mean, it's it's interesting that the pay per view model, and I don't know how that's done in history with the music because it's you know you go see a, a heavyweight bout, people will pay sixty a hundred dollars for a pay-per-view of a, of a fight right a pay-per-view of a concert which i would argue probably has higher ticket value than a fight ticket because the concert might play you know in, in 100 different cities um hasn't really been i don't think explored or exploited to the point where it maybe it could be right i mean you're seeing do people do zoom concerts and these online productions which are relatively low production value generally from someone's house but what if you know, someone like an AEG or a, a Live Nation took the forum or took Barclay Center or whatever uh, and did a full production show and monetized that, right? Maybe, maybe it's not a $100 ticket. Maybe it's a $20 ticket. I'm thinking there might be some price point yeah. that makes sense for a consumer because they're getting a higher level of production. Maybe they get to keep the live recording. Um, and the artist feels like they're actually at a, at a real performance versus, you know, the guitar players over there and the DJs back there. And eight people in different locations around the world. So maybe yeah. there's something there where they could, they could bring up those production values and, and monetize in a way that hasn't really been exploited before. Yeah, I think, I think, you know, we're seeing it, you know, on Twitch. I mean, obviously in the gaming sector first, um, to watch a concert, like, here's an example. Um, a, 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 this guy put a, a, a concert from Daft Punk in 2007 on his IGTV. This was a very rare concert. No one had the footage but him. And he literally just put up his his uh, his phone or his iPad and just went live on his IGTV. He had thousands of people interacting with this, with his IGTV based on people spreading it around. Um, so that's what really got me thinking because we're, we're seeing so many, you know, test cases right now of, of, of people just doing stuff on IGTV, whether it be you know Teddy Riley and 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 Babyface, who I know Leon um, is a you know, it's a mentor to Leon, and and you know Leon's you know kind of came up with with Babyface, um, but five hundred thousand people viewing live, I mean it's insanity. You know Travis Scott just was in Fortnite this past weekend. There was twelve million people that showed up. How do we monetize that? You know as as a business now, and that's what the gaming business has done so well, um, and what we've done. In, on that side of things and you know seeing what the capabilities are in the music space i think are going to be insane for artists coming up and and, and for you know aeg and, and live nation and um something you know something to touch touch on i mean even the tip jar i know a lot of the gaming platforms twitch now has a twitch uh, tip but, jar yeah donations yeah yeah spotify is looking at doing that now you take that you take five hundred thousand people watching if they even gave a dollar two dollars you're talking about enough money to really support the production and support the artist at, at, a, at a different level right you don't have to have the trucks you don't have to have the infrastructure and the crew you don't have to spend 50 percent of your budget on production which is what touring used to cost from the days that i remember touring but you know you bring those costs down the yeah. per ticket or the tip price maybe is much more compressed but there's still enough upside for the artist the promoter the, the anybody the label to participate because you're seeing these numbers, right? 12 million on Fortnite at a dollar a pop. That's, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. You know, it's really exciting to see um, everything transforming right now. Um, it's been crazy. I mean, again, for these numbers to kind of be coming in um, at, at this time, I mean, the, the possibilities are really endless. We work with a handful of influencers on, on Instagram and on, on YouTube and they're, some of them are really prospering right now. Like they're just doubling their viewership. They're, you know, they're, they're doing really well. And I think if you're really active and can engage at this time, it's a really good time for that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Caroline had to jump off early, but um, just seeing how artists are cross collaborating in the marketing, like for Summer Walker to do a cover to another mainstream song. I mean, that's a lot of eyeballs uh, driving for a release. Um, and we're seeing like different ways to, to boost audiences now. Um, 
so it's really it's really cool to to watch all that um any any questions from um from the q a tony um <clears throat> there's a couple more here um here's one what what is the anr what is the anr's role during a session i don't know if anyone wants to speak on that oh oh i would say the anr anr's role during a session um usually how i like to play it um like if it was an actual in-person session, I would come show up, make sure everybody's right, make sure everybody's good, feeling right. Um, just make sure like the session's going, everybody's flowing and vibing. And then usually like I'll get out of there just so they don't feel like I'm just staying the entire time. But if the session's going well, everybody's enjoying themselves, like music's being made, sometimes I'll stay too. But nowadays, like a lot of the people on my roster, um, they're not actually participating in actual in-person sessions. Like they're collaborating online and then they're sending me what they make. So it's just more of kind of like gearing for that type of um, session versus, you know, in-person sessions. Awesome. Very cool. Um, there's one more question here. How does an executive measure the success of a release? If anyone wants to talk on that. I mean, I know Car that probably is something for Caroline, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I would measure it. I mean, if it's a hit, it's a hit. You know, like if everybody fucks with it and it keeps going, like it's a hit. So that's what I usually try to aim for. Like I usually, every time I'm pitching music, like even if I'm pitching beats, sometimes I'll hop on it and I'll start rapping like i'm the artist in front of the manager in front of the artist just so they have inspiration to see where they could go with it but you're a rare one brit you're a rare <laughs> one. <laughs> I, I i realize that but i'm just like but you know you gotta figure it out but you know but it's i would like i said it just everybody enjoying great music and just bringing that to life and getting that exposure you know yeah definitely i mean you know with with the current state of tiktok and everything i mean you know we had we had Reezy renegade on here i mean this guy literally people his producer tag became a viral hit in itself you know so it's just like that that opportunities really are endless right now um through platforms and it's going to be exciting to see what platforms come about because of this pandemic and how you know how um how we can really just find ways to drive streams at this point you know i think that's the future of the next 10 years no for sure uh, leon any any advice you can give some of the audience um you know again you know you're you're making some incredible moves right now some of the biggest artists in the game um i know a lot of young producers and also producers in the game now are watching so um right advice you could give on that well i think it's very important to have a sound in 2020 i think every great producer and writer right now has their their particular vibe that they that they kind of influence into a lot of the 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 tracks that they're getting placed um, you know, you can see that uh, with Jetson made another one. Um, you know, he has a, a sound that that he's using on the baby, and, and and it's and it's working. And the reason that I think that we've been able to um, dominate, even even you know, leaning into the pandemic, is because we have a sound that people are definitely you know looking for, um, and that's been very helpful. And 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 even for us, we we're not afraid to collaborate. So I feel like a lot of people love the idea of being a hundred percenter, but I'd rather have like 18% of a hit than a than hundred percent of, you know, something that nobody's ever heard. So I think yeah. right now I've been, I've been doing my best to just keep the doors open to collaboration with other creatives that I know really have their, their, their eye on the pulse of what's going, going to happen next as well. I think it's very important to, of course, you know, use uh billboard and you know spotify's you know list for 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 you know what's hot but then also understand that there's going to be something that's happening after that so you should be attached to the new trends and really be listening and keeping your ears you know to the streets to just figure out what's going to happen next because i think a lot of writers and producers kind of get caught up in what's happening right now and then get left with the wave you know yeah, yeah yeah definitely um you know when jam compass launches we're going to be ha you know hopefully we can be a facilitator for these types of things and, and really bring yeah. the community together new trends and production styles i mean it's it's yeah. always changing so it's good to just keep up with it 
Yeah. Yeah. We just, you know, we want to, we want to have that hub where people can kind of talk and get those ideas uh, on the app with, you know, as well as finding ways to collaborate with each other and, you know, putting things together that would have never happened in real time. Um, some of the things that, you know, we're, we're going to be really honing in on, which we're excited about. Um, any other questions, Tony? I know we have like a few minutes left. Uh, that was it on, on as far as the Q and a, um, unless anyone else has some, something they want to share. Yeah. Anyone has any questions or any, any, anybody from the panel that wants to share anything um, before we wrap? I know we have like five minutes left. Um, or we could just... It's just I would just say keep creating. Like I know it's really shitty with everything that's happening in the world right now, but just keep creating and just try to find inspiration because like I, I feel this is just me, but... Like, I feel like there's a lot of people in this world that just want everything to go back to normal and people, they love music, they love great music and people still want to sing hits, you know, and I'm optimistic that we're going to figure out this pandemic and we're going to adjust to our new norm. But if everybody, I just feel like everybody should just get in, get in a state of realizing that there's going to be a new norm instead of wishing on the star of things going back to the way that they used to be, you know. Definitely. I think there's a question here. What are some new, some ways new artists can take advantage of this pandemic? Um, I know that's kind of what you touched on, Britt. Um, anyone have any, any thoughts on that? I would say not to think of it like you're taking advantage of it, you know, because it's a moment of this, all this stuff that we're going through and it's collective. We're all going through it together. If you're healthy, if your family's all right, you got a lot to be grateful for. So it's like, Thanks. like Brittany was saying, you know, hone in go deep like make something great listen and and put it out there i think right it's a great time to be, to be putting a lot out there and and that's what i would recommend anybody to do i would say don't be afraid right there's a lot of these new platforms including zoom i mean there's a there's a ton of new technology that's out there try it right no one knows what's going to be the new norm like Brittany was saying if there's going to be a different way that we consume listen to and work with music uh, I, I know the live business has got to be there, right? No, there's no substitute for that. But in the meanwhile, how are you going to get the workflow together? How are you going to operate out of your house? I mean, what, what platforms can you reach your fans with that you haven't touched yet, right? This is the time to experiment. This is the time to get out there and try that. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it does work. Two, two things, three things, 10 things. I mean, this is one of the few times I think where the world has slowed down a little bit where you can take, the month, take a minute and actually study some of these different technologies and platforms and see what works for you. Um, a lot of it's free. It's, it's amazing how much of this technology is available for zero dollars. And if there's a way to take advantage of that, build your, your fan base, build a connection between yourself and your audience, which I think is probably the most important thing you have as an artist or a creator, um, this is the time to do that. Right. Once everything cranks up again and you've got to go back to work and you got to go tour and you're going to be you're going to be caught up again in a time where you may not have the ability to look at these things like you do right now. So I would say take some chances, explore th some things. And and really, this is a time to connect with your fans. Awesome, Steve. That's awesome. Thank you. I don't thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. So um I think that's it for, for today's webinar, guys. I want to thank everyone for, for being a part of this. We really appreciate all of your insight and knowledge and your, and your experience. Um, and just really appreciate having you guys on here. Um, we'll be back next week, next Wednesday. Um, we're going to be doing a producer edition. Um, so maybe, Leon, we might need you back next week. But we'll keep you posted on that. Um, we're, next week, we're going to do um, basically all – an all producer edition um and see what, some, some fun stuff we can kind of put together Britt, if you got any people um from your roster too we would love to get them on um no for sure i'll hit a few people too that'll be really dope yeah that'd be great um and you know steve thanks for your help on everything your insight was great charlene thank you very much isaac um we'll be looking out for some more updates on mixed and key uh, I know me and Leon are big, big supporters of that. And Tony. Big fan. So. Big fan. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Someone said, can we get a manager in a &R edition too? Yes, we can. We will, we will listen to what the people want. We will put that together for you, Don. Um, so, Brett, we might need you again. 
No, that's <laughs> fine. Like I said, like I, I love talking to artists and writers and whatnot, everybody. So yeah. like I said, you're gonna be a resource. So let me know when you guys need me back. <laughs> like, you know, the, the times right now it's it's very unfortunate, but you know, I think, you know, as a as a society, we're you know, we're really coming together right now, seeing the ways that we can really expand this business and you know, some of the combos in, in, in this conversation here with um, you know, the, the transformation of the live space. I mean, it's exciting, you know, um, hopefully Steve, we can really help push blockchain to where it needs to be. Uh, I, we know, will. I know we're probably gonna have to team up on that with, uh, Jenna and the squad, but, um, I think, I think, uh, I think we can come together and, and build something really cool there. So, um, yeah, again, thanks everyone for being on. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, We'll see, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Bye, Tony. Have a good one. Take For sure. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.